Okay, hello, welcome to today's stream. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay. Hopefully all that 
uh, issues from before is sorted but as always let us know in the chat if there are any problems um we've got mods in the chat who will be there to answer any questions that you might have in this stream um this stream is going to be the second in our masterclass series and the previous stream we did last uh, last tuesday um in this series was the technical lure side of um, game creation so what we thought would be really cool to show you today is actually how we can make games um using the, just the controller in the uh, basic mode um or in, sort of, yeah in the basic mode of the editor so i'll be on the controller um, basic mode is available sort of keyboard and mouse as well so the other guys um, who are going to be joining me will be either keyboard and mouse or controller as well uh, so let's bring those guys in now okay so hopefully you guys can be heard now so say hello yep hello hello oh um yep so we have uh adam and sean joining us again um so first thing we need to do is we need to go in and create our game and as i say i am doing all of this on my uh, stadia controller here so let's go to the main menu and what we're going to make for you is a uh, sort of capture the flag um game based in a um sort of like a city block with like a nice park green area that sort of thing but to do this we're going to start from a starter map which will come with some basic game logic and what we're going to do is sort of build the environment and <clears throat> extend upon that um so let's go for a starter team ctf and we'll call this uh let's call this city ctf okay then we need to pick a picture for this i think this one's quite a good one for it Create and enter. Okay, and this is going to throw us straight into the editor experience. So for anyone who hasn't seen Crater before, and if this may be your first time seeing it, uh, Crater is a game development platform which is coming to Stadia uh, this summer. Um, so here we are in the editor experience, and I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is come back and invite the guys in to come and help me. So if I go to my social tab, uh, in fact, no, sorry, if I go to my game tab, Go to sharing, change the permissions. I can see you've got Adam here and Sean. Continue. So this is going. To, this is telling me that these are the two guys that are going to come and join me in the game. And now what we should see is the guys appear in my session with me. So a big part of Creator is its collaboration, uh, all in real time. Yeah, see Sean's just landed in with us, and here's Adam. Cool. Okay. Hello. Very, very nice base lap. <laughs> very good. Okay. Cool. Right. So, I'm going to explain sort of the basics of the game while these guys just run around and um, sort of start building out the map a bit more. And again, as I said, we're all using the basic mode. So previous times you might have seen is in the more advanced mode where we have a lot more UI on screen um, and a lot more sort of slightly more complex operations. So things like scripting and stuff. What we're going to show off here is the basic mode and how you can do all this sort of in basic mode um which means you could be doing it uh from your sofa for example you could be using the chromecast um sitting playing on a big screen in your front room um yeah which is a really nice way to make games okay so i'm gonna let you guys get on with that um basic controls are quite straightforward it plays very similar to um, a lot of other sort of games of this sort of um, perspective so the left stick will move the character around and the right stick will look around uh, a to jump um r3 will crouch so that all feels kind of quite intuitive and again a big part of creator is trying to make the game feel or the editor experience feel like as um as much of a game than anything so you're kind of playing a game making a game um that all works quite nicely uh a lot of the prompts actually appear on screen um they're kind of sat behind me at the moment but we can you get the prompts um contextual to what you're doing so if you're looking at something um it will tell you what buttons to press at what time um first thing we should do actually so now we've got this sort of very small amount of progress um what i'm going to do guys i'm just going to press the down arrow um, and we're going to jump into the preview um for the game so any moment or any time we want we can jump into preview the game so as you can see, we do have some gameplay that came with this map. Um, so it's the basic capture the flag game. 
So here we have a blue and a, and a red flag. Oh, ah! Dropped through the floor, you guys almost made a hole already. Okay, we'll go back. So I should be able to run over here, grab this blue flag. Oh, and again, drop through there. Okay, well, you get the idea. So we've come with some gameplay. Um, so that's what happens when you jump into preview while people are sort of mid-editing. Um, so what we can do is we can build upon this gameplay now. We can introduce new elements and introduce an environment. And any time we do that by just pressing the down arrow again, um, or down on the D-pad, that takes us straight back into the editor experience itself. Um, cool. Okay, I'll let you guys finish before I start trying to preview um, randomly. Sure. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Okay, cool. So from this mode, we can access the library and the library is where you'll find all of the assets and things that come with Crater. So things like the voxel materials, uh, all of our meshes, our effects, our sounds, all that sort of stuff. Um, so what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna jump and grab uh, some things into my hotbar. So let's get the, uh, the short grass voxel and we'll go to our meshes. We'll just search through here uh, using the tags. <clears throat> okay here have some of our meshes so at this point we're running around uh, as our character and we're able to place things um, as and where we'd like to so let's just place some trees around here so I can press R2 to tree there put one there move over here I can see that Adam's busy tapping away on his drone Okay, I'm going to return to my voxel and from here we actually get a few options um, of how we can interact with the voxels. Um, so if I press R2, I put a block down. If I hold R2, I can draw a line of blocks. And then if I hold L2, I enter sort of a deletion mode where I can stand back and delete those in that line. So similar to a lot of other creative tools, it's a case of placing down uh, putting no putting down blocks, placing blocks, uh, deleting blocks, that sort of thing. Uh, but it's a little bit more of like a paintbrush rather than sort of like a stamping individual blocks into the world. We have some other options that we can do. So we can do things like a grow tool. So what the grow tool allows us to do is actually start to build um, sort of in a bit more, as I say, a bit more of like a brush stroke than anything else. So if I hold R2, we see while I'm holding, we actually get a collection of the um, of the sort of voxels appearing out of the ground, and I can move around and do this to create sort of mounds and things with much more detail um, than sort of individual blocks would give. I'm just going to do this around here a little bit more, just to kind of give this park a little bit more of a sort of textured surface. And similarly to grow, I can go back and do an erosion so I can start to erode this mound away and start to sort of really sculpt it as I wish. Um, might notice Adam's drone up there. So a big part of basic mode is actually being able to still use your drone. So you still create um, in the same way as someone else's drone here flying around. Uh, I really like the jellyfish drone, actually. That's a really, really cool looking one. Um, yeah, so I can see these guys are busy, um, trees appearing around me. So again, everything in Creator happens uh, collaboratively, which is a really fun way of actually building environments together and getting that sort of instant feedback on each other's changes. Okay, so we can place things um, and we can build with the environment with the voxels quite quickly. Uh, if we wanted to place things with more precision, from the basic mode, we can actually access the properties of certain things. So again, if I go to my library, I'm going to search for bench. So you'll notice here I'm able to use the um, on-screen keyboard to search through the library. Okay, and I just need to clear my tree bag. Okay, let's go for a nice blue park bench. I'll stick this here. Okay, it returns to my library, and this time I'm going to search for books. So 
again nice and precisely i want to place some books um some various things on this bench um which gives me a bit more yeah a bit more of an appealing um sort of scene so again place that book there let's go back place a book bag Ooh, not a bookshelf book bag so this would just be like, like a backpack hey thanks train <laughs> I'll carry on with my work now. Okay. Um, so at this point, we can see we've got a couple of meshes here on the bench. If I press the uh, X button at this point, I'm going to um, sort of interact with the mesh to uh, access its properties. So let's watch the drone come out. And we notice now at this point, I'm able to move around the sort of the thing I've interacted with in like a fixed orbit camera, which helps me see exactly what I'm interacting with. Um, on the right hand side we've now got a list of properties have appeared and these are all the same sort of properties that you'd expect um, even from the advanced mode so I can change things like position, rotation, um, what the mesh is itself, um, whether it's got physics enabled and then from here I can also attach things like scripts and uh, all things that will have been made by a player um, in the advanced mode or downloaded from the sort of community asset browser. So let's just give this bag a little bit of rotation just kind of give it a slight offset, uh, make it look a bit more natural in the scene. Okay, and then we can look down here and do the same with the book. So we can sort of maybe slide the book around, um, stick it in the middle. And again, just a slight bit of rotation just to make it look a little bit more natural uh, to the scene. So it's just small things like that that stop the game feeling like it's based on on the grid and everything's sort of square to each other it's actually a really nice way of, of kind of getting the scene to feel slightly more alive and again all from the controller um okay I see what you guys have been up to so i see sean's got a road so that's a road you've downloaded from the community store yep cool and again the that someone else made uploaded yeah so someone someone's made this road and they've kind of i guess it's got individual pieces that you're clipping together um that's quite cool yeah Okay, what are you working on currently, Adam? So I've just put that sort of big pavement around the the park, between the park and the road. I think I'm going to put some nice city trees onto that to make it feel a bit more real. Cool. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, have you extruded out the edges at all? Ah, good point. Maybe... I should probably make the map a bit bigger. Yeah, if you, because I'll create some buildings now if you wanted to do that. Uh, you're going for the red or blue side first? Blue. Okay. If you extrude out the blue side, we can see Adam's drone floating off in the distance there, and he's just going to um, sort of extrude out the side. And I'll show you how extrusion works now. Um, yeah, that should be plenty of space. Okay, so next thing I want to do is find a skyscraper voxel. So again, as I say, we have all sorts of voxel materials available here. Um, so I'm going to look for our. We've got a, a few to pick from. I'm going to go for the skyscraper voxel here. Um, and we can see now if I pick a slightly smaller brush size, go for two. Okay, so if I hold the R2 button and step across, I'm going to draw a line of voxels across there. Now I could draw this whole block out using that technique, but what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to use the extrude tool, and we see that actually it highlights the face I'm looking at. So this time if I hold R2 and step back, I'm just going to drag this face out. Okay, so I can quickly sort of start to pull and stretch certain lines around. Um, now let's do uh, a straight extrusion up. Now, obviously, as a character, I can't get too high. But this is actually a really nice time to use a drone. So if I double tap the A button, I enter my drone. So my character is now busy tapping on his keypad. And I've actually entered the drone mode which um, again flies around a bit like a free camera. So left stick to move, right stick to look. Um, the A button will go up, um, R3 will go down. So that kind of mimics jumping and crouching as a control, as a, as a player. And I still have the same controls. So um, this time I'm extruding as the drone. I can hold R2, hold the A button, and that's gonna pull up out the ground my skyscraper. Okay, and at any point I can press a twice again to return to my character and have a look at what we've got. 
that's worked out quite nicely. I've got a nice tall skyscraper there in the background. So again, using all the different various um, voxel materials we've got. So I could do things like um, the all sorts of brick buildings. I could create, um, you know, plenty of variety of buildings with different window meshes and door meshes and things, um, which would take obviously um, a fair amount of time, but it would be um, obviously uh, possible. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our community asset browser to look for some buildings that someone's made for us already. So if I press the uh, Y button um, and press it again, I get to our community tab. Now here is a collection of uh, packages and packages are um, collections of uh, entities and assets that people have bundled together and made, made public basically for people to use. So in this case, let's filter this for uh, city. Oops, city. Okay, and if I just close this, so I can search down here and I can see that I've got the city buildings. There's a selection of city buildings used in Urban Street Race, which is another map that we've got. So if I press install, okay, I can now go to my library and go across to the templates. I can see that in my templates now, so again, a template is a collection of, sort of assets and entities um, sort of bundled together. Um, I can see that I've got all these assets now that have appeared at the top, these various office buildings. So here's one someone made earlier. Um, so again, I can just simply press the R2 button with that on my cursor to place it and have a quick look. So nice big building, some nice detail, and again, a nice combination of um, various um, 3D meshes and the voxels. So to speed this up a bit, I'm going to return to my drone and fly around. Um, oh, I can see the guys have started picking up some of the buildings as well. So that's good. Yeah, if you guys want to maybe start fleshing the map out um, with mm -hmm. some buildings, that'd be really fun. Okay, I'm going to go for one of these skyscrapers next. These buildings really start to make it look good quickly, don't they? Yeah, they do. And it, and again, like the beauty of it is, you know, someone's made these, and we've we've seen these before, and we've thought, oh, these are really these, are, you know, really quite nice uh, buildings to have. So let's let's just chuck them into our game now. Nice parking garage. So again, a really nice use of all the different voxel materials. I'm going to place some just in the center here. It's a slightly more uh, interesting scene. I really like this shop with the with the sort of dark door. That's a particularly nice one. Mm. Yeah, that looks really good. Mm. Oh, the the London looking one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really nice yeah. sort of combination of all the different assets. <laughs> it's a good door. It's good. Mighty but... good door, that. <laughs> As doors go, it's one of the better ones. <laughs> I think I think it deserves some flower pots in front of it. Cool. Oh yeah. yeah feel, for say, feel free. So again, the nice thing is um we don't have to take these buildings and use them as they are. We can sort of add our own customizations to them. Um, but let's uh, go for a slightly smaller building. We'll go for the same one next to it. That looks quite good. Okay, so very quickly we've ended up with this really quite nice looking uh, sort of park scene that we can start to flesh out. Um, one trick that we can do, um, again, let's go to our skyscraper building. So we've got these really tall, nice skyscrapers here. I don't know if one of you guys want to help me with this. Um, but what we can start to do is place these actually behind the scene, um, floating sort of slightly off the map. Um, and obviously, as long as we kind of restrict players from getting to the edge of the map, they shouldn't see that they're floating. But we should start to see a really nice, almost like a parallax effect of um, the buildings being slightly off 
um, in the distance, just making the map feel that little bit bigger. Um, nice idea, nice idea. Yeah. And again, all of this available. I'm doing all of this on the controller. So this is, um, you know, it's all possible uh, f from your own, you know, comfort of your living room. You don't have to be sat um, at the PC on a keyboard and mouse to do all this. Fly around in place. So you'll notice that the, the meshes do snap to whatever you're looking at unless you're looking into sort of the, the void essentially and then it will kind of move to a um, a distance. Okay, and then I think one of the finishing touches I always like with this hack is it gives you this kind of like this crane, which again, this is using um, a series of the meshes that we have available uh, in the library. But if we just start placing some of these um, let's just undo that one. Placing some of these in a way that doesn't necessarily get seen by players in the back, but from the front, just starts to really flesh the city out a little bit. And, it, you know, we can even go for things like placing it in the building here, but from the ground, <clears throat> just starts to really flesh things out and you know give the give the city some, some scale and scope so yeah this is looking really nice guys good job thank you although i think you've done you've done most of the building <laughs> you, Russ? i think so at this point so okay so at any point when, whenever we're whenever we're ready to um if you guys are we can hold down to preview the level again yep yeah sure go for it cool <clears throat> so we hold down and preview and this time we'll obviously um Sort of get a bit more of an idea of how the game would work um oh we've got spawns in the floor slightly i think there we are just jumped Ooh, out of it sorry. so we might just have to move those up slightly but again you know these things are going to happen so as you're developing quickly um the nice thing is you can kind of get a feel for whether things work um you can jump back and forth from preview to editor really quickly and start to make changes on the fly Ooh, nice park bench oh you got me who is that, Sean? Of course, it's always Sean. Okay, I'm gonna grab the flag. Oh wait, I'm by myself. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gotcha. All right. Dang. Nice. And scores a point. <clears throat> okay, so you can see the scoreboard's updating. We've got the timer at the top. Uh, we've got weapons now that work, uh, health bars, got on-screen prompts for various things. So there's all sorts of um, all sorts of logic that came included with the map um, to help us sort of start kickstart this game. Um, okay, so at any point we can hold down again. I'll interrupt your guy's fight Aww. and get us back to the I'm editor. Totally <laughs> I think you definitely were. I had like one health left. You didn't admit it, Adam. <laughs> Okay, cool. So I think what you guys might need to do now, um, obviously around the here is quite bare and empty. If you guys want to start mm. just fleshing the city out with a lot more detail, um, I might introduce a few more gameplay elements. So uh, as I said, what we had before um, was kind of the, the stock game that came with this. So we've built this, this environment. But actually what, what we want to do now is kind of take it a step further and start to make the game a little bit more our own. Uh, so to do this, we can lean on the community asset browser again to look for things um, that we can then, you know, sort of extend even further. So some weapon pickups um, and maybe some health pickups might be quite good. So I'm going to go back to the community tab and let's look for a shotgun. Okay, let's install that. So again, this is um, something that another player will have created. Um, and it's just using things that were available from the asset library, including, um, and then, you know, added some of their own scripts, perhaps. Okay, so from here, I can then go to the library again, look at my templates tab, and I can see that the shotgun is there. So if I want to check this out before I place it in the game, I can press the X key or the X button. And that's going to give me this sort of dedicated template view. So from here, I can kind of view the template. Um, I can see all of its properties and I can start to make changes to this master template. Um, so if I place several instances of this, um, this template in the, in the world, 
then made changes to this uh, master copy, it would iterate through all of those instances and update it. Okay, so one thing I might want to do is have a quick look through what this shotgun came with, for example. So it came with a gun script attached and I can collapse that uh, inventory item. So what it's called or how the inventory interacts with it. Uh, pickup spawner script uh, and an iron sight script. So these four scripts came with the package and they're now available for me to use in my game um, however I'd like. Um, I'm going to have a quick look at the pickup spawner script. So there's a few things I want to change here. So to start with, I think it'd be really handy if I could um, use it on collision. So rather than having to actually interact with it in game, I think the players should be able to run onto these and actually collect the shotgun. So let's tick use on collision. Uh, rotate time. So at the minute that's zero seconds, so it won't rotate. But again, pickups always look nice in a game when they do a bit of a, a spin. So let's say a four second spin time. Um, that's probably probably enough for now okay so uh, let's go back okay and we'll go back to our library and we'll equip this to the um, to our hotbar and I think what we'll probably do is just place one shotgun in the middle of the park that kind of acts as like a, a super weapon um, so again let's uh, have a quick look so it placed it in the ground because that's the way that the creator kind of had the the pivot point for it so what we might want to do is is actually go and update uh, the position of this uh, using the properties now as I've interacted with it here I've actually interacted with part of it but what I want to do is get to the shotgun itself so from this view I can press the Y button and actually have a quick look at the world tree um, even you know on a controller in basic mode so if I just expand the terrain and arc, look for my shotgun there it is, shotgun, okay. So now I can press the Y button to look at the properties for the shotgun itself, and then move that out the ground. So we're able to browse the world tree um, and you know, sort of view the hierarchy of things from there, which is quite a nice way um, as a basic player, perhaps start to look at the more advanced side of Crater using the advanced mode. Things like that will be familiar to them if they've actually had exposure to them in basic mode, which is quite nice. Um, okay, so one thing, as I said before, I think would be quite good is to maybe just up the damage of the shotgun just to make it a bit more of like a super weapon. So I can look at the gun script that's attached to it and then using the controller, I'm just going to go through, uh, increment that to I think about 300 damage per shot is quite a good amount of damage to have. Okay, I'll have a look at a few more things, other things that might make it feel like a powerful weapon. Um, shots per clip let's maybe go for like eight shots we have to reload to a uh, three second reload time seems good so okay that all seems quite good cool so that's our super weapon shotgun next let's maybe think about adding um, some health pickups so players can heal themselves as and when they want to so again I'm going to go back to my community tab and I know that We've got one in here, so let's look for health pickup. Okay, so what this is going to tell me is actually there's a conflict here with some packages. So as I'm downloading these packages, sometimes there'll be a dependency. So as I, for example, downloaded um, one package, it will pull in another package and say, well, if you want that package, you need that package as well. So obviously with that, there's going to be conflict. So what this is telling me now is that the inventory package that's already installed with this game is actually newer than the one that this package is trying to bring in. So I can choose at this point if I want to take the package version or if I want to keep the version I've got. So I'm going to keep the version I've got. And again, I'm going to keep the version I've got. And again, keep the version I've got. So more often than not, you probably would keep the version you've got. Um, but you've got that choice at that point. So let's go to our library. And we can see we have the health pickup as an item. I'm just going to place some of these in my game. So these are little health pickups that will um, sort of give the players a bit of health back just as they as they run into them. I'll place one on the other side of the park here. How are you guys getting on? 
Not too yeah. bad, just doing some decorating at the back. I'm nice. Having fires to everything. I don't oh. know. <laughs> not, way. not not too many Sean fires. <laughs> okay. I've already put fires on things, Sean. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Oh. So what I can do now is I've placed these four uh, pickups, but I think actually what would be quite good is again if these span like the shotgun did. Um, so instead of going to the template directly, what I can do is I can interact with this one here, and I can see there's three icons at the top here. So one of them is a edit edit template, and that takes me to the template view for this for this template. So I can make the changes here. And that will affect all of the instances at the same time. So, so I can see this one is already actually going to rotate and use on collision. So that's good. That's what I wanted it to do. Um, we scroll down, we can see that there's this health pickup script, which is our script to heal the player. Uh, let's just increase that slightly from 250 to let's say 400. Okay. So now when I return, that's going to affect all of my, um, all of my pickups at the same time. Okay, so that's one way that we can take stuff from the store. Um, and as I said, when we downloaded these things from the store, we actually ended up with um, the copies of the scripts as well. So as a basic player, we can attach scripts to things. But let's have a look at kind of trying to lever, uh, leverage some of those. Um, first, I'm just going to download one more script. So let's go back to our community tab and let's have a look at... player buff so this player buff script so this script is um one that's designed to kind of increase the speed and um the jump height of the players when you call the the relevant function okay so what i'm going to want to do is actually set up some of my own pickups at this point so i'm going to go to the library i'm going to look at the meshes tab and just search for something that looks Kind of appropriate enough for a, a pickup maybe something like one of the crates there we go let's get this crate okay so i a few crates what type of crate are you using i'm just using the the sort of the regular little kind of wooden crate oh okay I think I've got a few of those around, so just... Oh, that's out. okay. Well, what I'll do is I'll make mine spin around, because that will uh, uh, okay. make it stand out. Um, so let's place that crate there. Okay, so now this is just a, a placed crate, but if I interact with it, I can do some things like adding scripts to it. So, for example, let's add the entity, and let's add script. Okay, so here's a list of all the scripts that my game currently has, and a lot of these came with the starter template, and a lot of them have then also come from the things we've downloaded. Okay, so let's add the pickup spawner script. Okay, so the pickup spawner script, if I just have a look here, comes with a list of options um, that we've seen on the shotgun. So I'm going to want to add a few things like uh, use on collision would be quite good. Uh, a rotate time would be quite good. So four seconds of rotate time. Okay, pickup sound. Uh, let's have a quick fly through here. Uh, what would be a good sound? Uh, button notification. Go with that. Okay, and then what I need to do is then hook up some logic to say kind of what's going to happen when we inter when we sort of collide with this crate. Uh, first, I'm just going to move it off the ground slightly. People in this city are not good drivers, are they, Sean? <laughs> Have you guys got lots of car crashes? Well, I'd already <laughs> set one up and Sean's just set up another <laughs> car crash. Okay, so as I said, as I said before, uh, we want to kind of when we collide with this crate, we want all the players to kind of get either a speed or a uh, jump boost. So if I press uh, the library button again and navigate across to templates, 
I can see I've got this player template, which again came with the starter map itself. So if I um, edit this template, we get this kind of floating icon, and that's just one of the things that kind of represents the player in this view. But what we need to do is add the player buff script that I just downloaded. So if I go down and add to entity, add script, and then right down here, it might just get lost slightly behind the social links, but there's a player buff script that I can add. Okay, so here we can see I've got these um, options that came with the script um, that were the exposed properties by the creator of the script. So speed boost, uh, the number, how much to um, boost by, and jump boost, again, how much to multiply the height by. But let's just add these messages here. So these, these are the messages that the players will see. Um, and we'll just say... Speed boost. Okay. And jump boost. Okay, so that's now attached to our player. So that script's ready to sort of update the player as we need it to. The next thing we'll need to do is interact with our crate again. And we know that the pickup spawner script is going to do its um, pickup behavior. So hiding it, getting it to rotate um, when it's collided with. But now we actually need to tell the script what to do when we collide with it. So when we collide with this crate, we actually have this inbuilt um, option here. So for on collision, we can trigger the following events. So what we want to do is on collision with this, we want to look for either a specific entity or every instance of a template. So in this case, we want to look for every instance of the player template. And it picks up the player buff script as the script to find the function on, because that's the only script on the player. And the event will be uh, let's say speed boost for this one. Okay, so when we interact with this, all the players in the world should collect a, uh, have a, have a speed boost. For now, let's just do the same on this side with a uh, jump boost. So we need to go down and we need to add to entity the pickup spawner script. And we want to use on collision, add a bit of rotate time. Okay, and we want this to respawn sort of every 20 seconds. Okay, how are you guys getting on? You're almost ready for preview soon, you think? Good. Yep, pretty ready. I think you'll enjoy oh. how much fire and smoke there is. Nice. Hopefully. Um, could one of you guys maybe go to the uh, game entity and just make sure the round time is on, like two minutes or something? Ah, uh, sure, yeah. Okay, oh, I just forgot I need to make sure I set this on collision up on this one. On collision, let's add an event of for every player. Let's do a jump boost. Okay, so you guys ready? Yep. Yep, so now I can press down preview. And we'll jump in and have a quick preview with these pickups. 
I've already seen some of the fire, just as the level started. <laughs> oh, fire is glorious. Thank you, Box. It's nice. <laughs> okay, cool. So it's me against you two guys. So okay, yeah, I can see you've got some more sandbags and stuff around here. That's quite cool. Uh, oh wow, there's some serious car crashes going on around here. <laughs> yeah, as you say, the, the drivers of the city aren't the uh, aren't the best. No, they literally have like a circular road to follow, and they still manage to crash into each other. The roads don't even go anywhere. Oh. Dawn stole my flag. Okay, I've got your flag back. I just, yeah. Not my, not necessarily my uh, finest I'm hour. Going. Okay, so we should be able to see nice. that some of our pickups are starting to spawn now. So here we have one of our spinning boxes. Um, oh, I'm going to pick up the shotgun as well. So we're all we're running faster. We're jumping higher. Oh, wow. And if I can catch you with my shotgun, I'll get some health. There we go. Oh, nice. Okay, go with the shotgun. So you can see that we've taken the original idea and we've actually managed to expand on it slightly uh, with um, our own sort of take on gameplay. We've introduced more weapons. We've introduced the pickups. Uh, we've introduced sort of boosts to players. So it's you know we've we've kind of yes we did start with a um with a sort of starter map but actually we've managed to build that and sort of start to craft our own gameplay. I think if we maybe have um about five ten more minutes of just adding a bit more detail to the level, um that would be quite sure. good. Sean, I think that was a call for more fire and more smoke. Uh, less Ooh. fire and smoke, probably more. More stuff around the flags. I think that's quite exposed and open around the flags <laughs> um, at the moment. Well, maybe. Okay. I think more fire and smoke around the flags is what he's saying. Yeah, definitely not what I'm saying. <laughs> um, okay, I'm just going to try and just reset my game a little bit because I'm just noticing a bit of a drop at the minute. So bear with me. But yeah, so I'll let you guys carry on Russ, doing that. I was just going to say before you do that, unless it's too late do you have a edit code so a few other people can hop in or is are we just going to publish it and play it we'll publish it so at the end i'll, I'll show a publish okay, sure. yeah and we'll play it so um now would be a good time to get your questions in and say we've got mods in the chat answering all of your questions i can see there's quite a lot going on um well i just reset this so uh, if, if anyone's just joining us and um, anyone who hasn't sort of seen crater before uh, crater is a collaborative game development platform which is coming exclusively to crater this summer uh what we've been doing to here stadia uh sorry did i say to crater <laughs> to, <did. laughs> to, to stadia this summer um so uh, what we've been doing on this stream is we've been showing off how you can actually create games uh, using your controller um not having to do any of the advanced functionality so you can actually craft uh, your own kind of gameplay experiences using that uh, which is just a really nice uh, thing to do you could be sat sort of on a big screen in your front room using the chromecast um making games uh, which is you know it's really really quite fun really quite special and unique okay um so the other thing is crater will be coming as a pro game uh, when it launches um, and obviously, if you sign up to Stadia now, you do get your uh, pro subscription uh, for your sort of two months of pro for free. So there's no reason not to jump in and try it out uh, when when we do launch. Aha, vending machines is a thing you have all, all over a city as cover, probably. Yeah, plenty of vending machines would be good. I'm starting to get imaginative with the cover now. Nice. I'm running out of ideas. Yeah, well, that's good. So I think, yeah, we are building a capture the flag map. So it'd be good to have plenty of cover for, shoot, uh, for shooting from behind and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> and I'm just putting police barriers in front of every weird looking thing. Because obviously there's, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> there's still got to be some law in this town. And it's got to tell you not to go near the weird vending machines in the middle of the road. <laughs> Yeah, definitely don't go near this uh, this grave in the middle of the pavement surrounded by tanker traps. I did say I was starting to run out of ideas. 
<laughs> looks pretty dodgy though, doesn't it? It does look a bit dodgy. It okay. also has loads of smoke coming out when you play the game. Should hopefully be back with you any second. And it has a bench next to it so you can observe it for a while if you're bored. Ah yes, this flaming grave. How oh, beautiful. <laughs> it's a smoking grave. Maybe it should be flaming. I'm going to put a blimp in the sky because I can. Oh yeah, good idea. That's the police blimp. Can it have smoke coming out? <laughs> it's on fire. <laughs> you didn't say yes, but I mm -hmm. assumed yes. Okay, I'm coming back to you guys now. All right. Okay, oh, cool. Oh, I know. We've got those effects which are like ambient blowing leaves, haven't we? That's probably a bit better than just fire. Did you not put some dust down? Because I thought I saw a bunch of ambient dust. I didn't. Oh, I'm going to put some ambient dust down because I love ambient dust. Okay. Yeah, you put that ambient dust down. We'll do a little bit of ambient exciting. dust and then I think we're probably ready to publish this and get some people in. So if anyone from the studio is watching, um, if you wanted to get ready to jump in, that'd be quite handy. Then we'll have a, a round or two of, of this. We have a quick test to make sure Adam hasn't put down too much fire. Yeah. Okay. So you, you can't really have too much. <laughs> okay. You guys, ready? you guys ready then? Yeah. Sure. Yep. Go for it. Okay. So I'm going to preview one more time, and then we'll jump in and we'll uh, sort of publish the game. That's a pretty beautiful modifier. Yeah. Okay, looking good. So we've got, yeah, quite a nice city that's built up. So just to reiterate the point, um, everything we've done in this stream, this entire environment uh, was built in basic mode. Now I've been using the um, controller the entire time, but you could also use the keyboard and mouse in the basic mode. If it helps, I've been sort of switching between the two at random times. Oh, uh, jump I've been using the controller the whole time. Yeah. Might need you to save me. I think my quality is dropping a little bit again. Um, okay, so we, I think we see the game kind of works there. So um, or we'll just go back to edit. So if you guys want to back out to the hub uh, and then we'll sure. jump in and uh, we'll start to, um, I'll get it published so people can sort of jump in and play with this. Okay, so once we're happy with the game, um, in fact, I might just return to the hub as well. So return to the game. Uh, so we've got a game, we've made it, we're happy with it, we want to sort of get people to come and play it. Um, so now let's go to our create page. Oh, find... just a sec, Russ. Yep. Um, I'm just going to add a bit of music right into the middle of the game, if that's okay. Okay, yeah, go for it. You let me know. Just because we've got no, no kind of music in this. Sure. Uh, I'll that... find something action-y for you. Yeah. While you do that, I'm just going to try one more thing, see if I can... Sort the quality out. Sorry about that. There we go. There should be some cool action music added to the game. Can you check that out? It better be cool. Well, Matt Black wrote the music, so of course it's cool. It's really <laughs> yeah. cool. That's true. Okay, so just to again, to sort of if anyone's just sort of starting to join us, um, what we're showing here is a uh, crater, which is a a collaborative game development platform coming to Stadia um, exclusively this summer. Okay, so now we're back. I can go to my create page and I can see that there's a few people in the hub now, which is quite fun. So I'll get this published. So we'll go to my game. Uh, oh, I can't publish it, I think, because have you quit now, Adam? Oh, sorry, I was just pressing the button. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Just returning now, so try again in a sec. Okay, so one thing it stops you from doing is publishing while people are in the editor. Um, obviously, it needs to sort of get the save in and, and not publish while changes are being made.
Yep, sorry about that. That was just me adding the music and then forgetting to quit. That's okay. Uh, might take a second or two. So who else have we got in the hub here to hang out with? It looks like we've got Robin, we've got Shawborn, John and Hannah. Nice. Okay, so there'll be a few more of us. Okay. I think we might need to wait a little bit longer for that to close down. So what we could do, um, I'll probably have to show the, the publish flow another time. Um, if you guys go to the play page, um, you might be able to see it. Cause I think it might still publish it for now. Uh, if you search for city ETF. Uh, no. Okay. No, can't find that. I'll try just city. If no, I could try share code. Yeah, if not, we'll just jump back in. If it's... Okay, I'm going to jump back in. It's taken a bit longer uh, than I thought it was going to. So I'll get permissions for everyone who needs it. So you guys can jump back in still because you should have permission to join in again still. Yep. I'm going to come back in. Okay, so John. Okay, I can do John and Robin. I don't think me and Hannah are actually friends, so. Oh, wow. Code, would come so. <laughs> I can do a link. Okay. I feel like we should just start playing rounds, Sean. Get some practice in before everyone else comes. Uh, yeah, if you guys want to start. Um... <laughs> jump into preview so um any of you guys who are jumping in uh should be able to jump into voice as well so okay, okay i've just started preview oh cool. we'll preview a couple of times and then we'll probably call it a day so uh if you want to get your questions in make sure you get them in now um sort of let's say mods and chat will do their best to answer them uh, we'll probably run for another five minutes so if you have a question make sure you answer it hey well here's hannah Russ, don't tell her that you weren't friends with her on stage. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> okay, so one thing you might have noticed there is um, another sort of small feature that's built in um, with the starter maps is a sort of like a spectate I mode. Very <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> speed boost, right. Adam stole my flag, got a speed boost. Oh. <laughs> Oh, is that you taking my flag now, Russ? That is. If someone could grab the jump boost, that'd be great. There we go, jump uh, boost. Where's the jump boost? I've got it. Everyone should have it now. Oh, right. no, you made it back. Yeah. We just need to try and capture your flag back, I think. Save me, Adam. Where are you, Sean? I'm trying to shoot Russ as well. Oh, yeah, okay. You shoot Russ. I've got their flag. Try and run away. Health oh, pickup. Health, pick, no. health pickup. Jump boost. Someone oh, else. Rough. Someone needs to get our flag back. Oh, oh, there's the flag. Dude, Adam, take him. I'm trying. Stop him. Oh, no, stop him. Does it reset? I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. No! <laughs> oh well. I think they deserved it to be fair, Sean. No, they don't. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Captured. Oh, nice. Oh, Just in time. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> cool.
Okay. I tapped out for most of that trying to get my Discord chat to work. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. We're going to go again though, right? Yeah, we'll go again. We'll go for, let's, let's say two more rounds. So we'll say best of three. And that was... Uh, was that the one. practice? That was, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> go Adam and Robin. Yeah, yeah. Let's do this. Dream team. Should we go for more teamwork this time or just random sporadic <laughs> shooting? Just, just make sure you uh, avoid the flaming grave. I'm just going to go straight for the flag. Oh, oh yeah. Wait. We need to do, we need to do like a Rocket League style defense. So we need no. to be defending. <laughs> oh, Russ stole our flag. Let's stop him. Watch both Hi. exits. There he is. He's on the left hand side. I see him. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah, I am yeah. like that. <laughs> it is the colour though, so Where's our flag? Where's our flag? <laughs> no. Oh no. <laughs> yes! Oh. Jump over. <laughs> Just jumped over the weird smoking grave in the street. <laughs> weird smoking <Yes>. what? <laughs> grave. Grave? Oh, there is a weird smoking grave. <laughs> a lie. Right, I'm going to look for this uh, shotgun. Is it there? Yeah, I got the shotgun. Okay, oh, I'm <laughs> instantly killed with the shotgun. I don't know what health you were, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I, th oh, no. I thought that would be a good revenge kill. We are on opposing teams. Go, Robin. I'm going. I'm going. Oh, oh, oh yes. No. Oh, he's going right out of time. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> Nicely done. Okay. So I think we'll go one more round. Um, so if anyone does have any questions, make sure you get them in now. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do, because we've got plenty more content coming out uh, in the coming weeks. You love that emo, don't you, Sean? It's my favourite emo. <laughs> uh, someone went left. Someone's coming in. I'm just going full front. Do we have anyone goalkeeping? No. <laughs> I can't chase him. <laughs> oh, few boosts as well. No, I keep getting stuck on all your environment. <laughs> no, oh. nicely played, Sean. Okay, I'm gonna go defend. No. <laughs> okay, Robin, I'll, I'll goalkeep. Go. Alright, I'm in, I'm in. Oh. Go on, Adam. Hello? Speed boost really helps. Yeah, Speed I was gonna say, really you're helps. very oh, no. right there. <laughs> yeah, that. Come on the left. Oh, no. Keep going, Robin. No, no, I ran in the <laughs> 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 why, would why, would, why would you do such a thing? <laughs> I may have got in Robin's way as well. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should take on, some of the blame on, here. Best out of three, we've got to have this one. Go, John, go. Come on, oh, no. John. Oh, no. Let John do it. The super shotgun. Fling of bullets. Um, how are you so fast? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. 20 seconds left. Help us. No. No. Yes! Wait, defend. We've got to defend for six seconds. Oh, God. Don't let oh, me no. Go. no. There okay, we are. I think we're safe. I think we're safe. Aww. Nicely yeah. played, red team. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for jumping in with that game, guys. Um, that's been... That was quite fun. So, Hopefully you can see what we've done there. It's taken us an hour and we've managed to create our own game with our own sort of gameplay elements um, entirely on a controller. 
more entirely in basic mode uh, with a mix of controller and keyboard and mouse. Um, I was on the controller the whole time, so there's nothing stopping you from sitting in your living room uh, and playing that on the big screen, which is really good fun. Um, okay. So thanks for helping out, guys. I'm just going to mute you uh, while I wrap this up. Boom. Okay, so as I say, that was um, that was Crater. So um, we're coming exclusively to uh, Stadia this summer, and we are going to be available as a pro game. So that means, obviously, if you sign up for Stadia, you get your two months for free. So you, there's no reason why not to check uh, State, uh, Crater out when we release. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, we've got content coming out all the time. So we've got a whole bunch of live streams planned, as well as videos. Um, at the minute, we're running a small series of creator showcases, showing off some of the videos that we created um, or we had created for us by our indie developers. Um, so yeah, brilliant. Thank you for joining the stream. Um, make sure you get yeah, your questions in. Um, if you if it, anything you wanted to ask that you didn't um, get a chance to ask during the stream, uh, jump into Discord. We sort of do our best to answer whatever we can over there. Uh, and as I say, make sure you subscribe and set up notifications to get alerted as to when we are streaming in the future. Uh, and we'll be back in another stream this Friday. So thanks, everybody. Uh, we'll see you in the next stream.